Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1983 Detroit Tigers season replay. Today's matchup is between the Chicago White Sox and the Detroit Tigers at Tiger Stadium. On the mound for the White Sox today is John Matlack, whose record is 0-4 with a 6.06 ERA. And pitching for the Tigers today is Jack Morris, whose record is 4-1 with a 4.15 ERA. So the White Sox got up on this early yesterday, and uh, I thought for a minute they had us where they wanted us, but we came back, we scored two runs in the ninth inning to tie the ball game up, and we actually had a chance to win the game. Uh, we had runners on first and third with one out, and I forget who the batter was now, but uh, the batter hit a ground ball to third, and the runner on third was thrown out at home, and... Uh, we went to extra innings, and unfortunately, Roger Weaver, our closer, was not up to task, and he um, he gave up a couple runs, and that was the ball game. So uh, we were due to lose a game. We're twenty and five, and this is the last game of April. So after today's game, after I get the the game uploaded, I will do a separate video that will include uh, the standings for the month of. April and the league leaders uh, through the first month of April. So uh, we're going to do that right after today's game. Let's go ahead and get started. As always, I appreciate everyone following along, like, and or subscribe to the channel. Really appreciate that. Oh, man, uh, I did not notice uh, that we've only got three bullpen arms available, two lefties and a righty. As Weaver, Dave Smith, and Kami all had to go extra uh, extra pitches last night because uh, Tom Filer got knocked out uh, before the fifth inning. So, uh, and that was kind of our problem uh, yesterday. We were short of right-hander in the bullpen, and we could not go to uh, Brian Kelly. He was uh, listed as tired. So that's that's kind of what happened with our bullpen yesterday. And now we're going to face the same situation today Jack Morris is pitching he has uh, 80 plate appearances against the White Sox current lineup so they're betting 221 against him that's a good sign let's take a look at the lineup for today uh, John Matlack of course is a lefty so we have our lineup in there versus lefties we are going to give Gibby a shot at playing today even though he's a left-hander uh, he's in the lineup, and actually all of our regular Tigers are in there, with the exception of uh, Andre Dawson, who doesn't hit lefties well. We have Glenn Wilson in there who does. So, Okay, let's take a look at the Chicago White so Sox lineup for today's game. Batting leadoff, playing second base, is Neil Fiala. Batting second in right field is Rusty Coots. Batting third and DHing is Rod Allen. Batting cleanup, playing left field is Ron Kittle. Batting fifth, playing third base is Buddy Bell. Batting sixth, playing shortstop is Fran Mullins. Batting seventh, playing first base today is Henry Cruz. Batting eighth and catching is Biff Pokoroba. And batting ninth. In center field is Tony Scott. We got Jack on the mound. You don't know Jack until you've seen his log. Once you've seen his log, you'll realize he's doing pretty well. He won uh, four out of the first five starts. He had that atrocious start against the Indians and bounced back with a, almost a complete game uh, against Toronto. You take a look at his overall numbers, making his sixth start. 4-1 with that 415 ERA. It's a little high. We don't like it that high. Uh, 25 strikeouts in 34.2 innings pitched. The opponents are batting 218 against him. Fastball tops out at 95 miles an hour. I feel like that's gone up a tick, hasn't it? His splitter is his best pitch. We gave it to him this year. Rated at 93. Uh, the fastball in general is, is rated at 88. He's got a slider. That is average and a changeup, which... Uh, doesn't really throw that often. Overall rated in 85. He's 27 years old, and he goes to free agency next year. He's on the no-trade list for the Tigers. And we need another big start today. Uh, before we get today's game started officially, um, 
I wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, Chicago White Sox. Of course, we're playing the 1983 season, and that was the year that the White Sox uh, won the American League West, uh, eventually losing in the ALCS to Baltimore, who went on to win the World Series in 83. Uh, it, when the uh, White Sox uh, won the division, they were 20 games up over the second-place Kansas City Royals. It was the first time the White Sox had been in the playoffs since 1959. Um, at the All-Star break uh, in 1983, uh, the Texas Rangers manager Doug Rader said that he didn't think that the White Sox were a very good team, that they were winning ugly. And they adopted that phrase, winning ugly, uh, as their mantra for the season. And the White Sox uniforms that you see during the season with the, uh, the socks across the chest, those are considered their winning ugly uniforms, which they wear uh, occasionally as a third jersey nowadays. Um, Ron Kittle, he won the Rookie of the Year this year. As you can see, he's uh, in the lineup and cleanup. He, he uh, won the Rookie of the Year, hit 35 home runs. That set a rookie mark for the White Sox and was uh, three shy of the American League a lead for home runs in 83. Lamar Hoyt, who is a bullpen arm in uh, the White Sox uh, bullpen here, uh, he won the Cy Young Award in 83, going 24-10 and 10 with a 366 ERA. Floyd Bannister, uh, who is not on this team, I believe he's on Seattle in this game, uh, he won 13 of 14 games uh, after the All-Star break and finished third in strikeouts with 190. And, of course, La Russa won uh, Manager of the Year. So the Chicago White Sox, 83 uh, Sox, were a pretty damn good team. Um, uh, but, unfortunately, they lost to the uh, Red Hot uh, Baltimore Orioles and Cal Ripken, who won the uh, American League MVP that year. Okay, let's get started with today's game. Here's Neil Fiala leading off against Jack Morris. Play ball! Fiala betting 228. With no home runs, sends it over Glenn Wilson's head for a leadoff double. That is Fiala's fourth double of the season. Uh, he batted 327 last year, was in the top five in uh, batting average. Off to a slow start, but leads off the game with a double. So he's in scoring position for Rusty Kuntz. Two for 11 in his career against Morris. Ground ball to Trammell. Fiala has to hold. There's one down. That's going to bring up Rod Allen. Allen strikes out. First K for Morris. Two down, and here's Ron Kittle. Kittle had the day off yesterday. He's only batting 167 versus right-handers, and he strikes out. So back-to-back -back Ks, and Morris, uh, who gave up the leadoff double, uh, keeps him off the board. Let's go ahead and do the Tigers' official Lineup rundown, batting leadoff, playing second base is Sweet Lou Whitaker. Batting second in left field is Ricky Henderson. Batting third and DHing is Kirk Gibson. Batting cleanup at third base is Mickey Hatcher. Batting fifth, playing first base is Eddie Murray. Batting sixth, playing shortstop is Alan Trammell. Batting 7th in right field is Glenn Wilson. Batting 8th in center field is Chet Lemon. And batting ninth, playing catcher is Lance Parrish. John Matlack off to a bad start in 19 1983's 0-4, making his 6th uh, start of the season. He's got a 6.06 ERA. Uh, opponents are batting 321 against him. He's got 28 strikeouts in a 32.2 innings pitch. He's got a complete game. Uh, his fastball tops out at 87. He is a fly ball pitcher. His ground ball percentage is 35. So what is that? He's 65% fly ball, I guess. Uh, his fastball is his best pitch. Rated an 86. His curveball just below average, 78. Uh, he is going to free agency next year as a 34-year-old. Rated an 83 overall right now. He's got a straight mouth. John is glad to be the number two starter in Chicago. On another team, he might not might be in the middle of the rotation. Okay, well that's optimistic. You got to give him credit for keeping uh, a straight mouth positive. 
<laughs> Here's Sweet Lou leading off against John Matlick. Ground ball to short. There's one down. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, first base is Henry Cruz, a uh, terrible defensive uh, player. He um, is typically their DH, and he's making his first start of the year. Okay, so Henderson walks with one out, 75% chance at um, stealing second. I think we're gonna we're gonna try. Uh, because uh, Gibby, who is batting pretty decently versus left-handers, um, you know, we, we, we lefty on lefty, we're gonna we're gonna try to get Henderson into scoring position. And Henderson is successful. That is his 15th stolen base, 15 out of 20. Very good. Okay, so in scoring position for Gibby, we're gonna let Gibby take a cut, two-two count, and he strikes out on a pitch that's under his wrists. Two down, here is Mickey Hatcher. Hatcher, ground ball to short. And that'll finish off the inning. We go to the top of the second, no score. Buddy Bell, Mullins, and Henry Cruz do up. Buddy Bell, he had a home run in yesterday's game, his second on the season. Pops it up into foul ground on the first base side, one down. Next up, Fran Mullins, 0 for 4 in his career against Jack. Sends a fly ball out to Lemon in center field. Two down. Here's Henry Cruz. He was an everyday starter last year for them at DH. Batted 328. And he's making his first start today. He is not happy. And uh, who could blame him? You bat 328 and you're getting your first at bat at the end of April? Ground ball to first. Murray. Makes the play, a 1-2-3 inning, go to the bottom of the second. We got Eddie Murray leading off. He's got 24 RBI this season. Crushes it to dead center field. That's going to make it 366 feet. Easy play, though, for the center fielder, Tony Scott. One down. Trammell, ground ball to short. Two quick outs, here's Glenn Wilson. And Wilson, a slow roller to second base. All right, that'll do it. We move on to the top of the third. Biff Pocaroba leading off, batting 232 versus right-handers. He is a switch hitter, and he skies it on the infield. Near second base, and Whitaker makes the catch. One down. Back-to-back -back switch hitters with Tony Scott. Number nine hitter up. He sends a fly ball into right center field. Two outs, and we're back to the top of the lineup with Neil Fiala, who has the only hit today, led off the game with a double. It's a easy ground ball to first. Game is moving along, one hit between the two teams. We have not lost to a left-hander this year. So I suppose we're due. Hey, there's uh, Lemon dropping it into left center field. That is the first hit for the Tigers. We do not want to go for two. Lemon on first. Uh, wow, this could be a double play. We're going to let Parrish take a cut. There we go. Fly ball into left. One down. Okay, now we're going to hit run with Lou, Lou one for seven in his career against Matlack. Good job, gets the ball in play. That'll move Lemon over into scoring position for Ricky. Henderson walked the first time up, had a stolen base. And a base hit up the middle, that should score Lemon. There we go, RBI single for Henderson. And with two down, we are definitely sending him. This is exact the, exactly the right time to run. One for one today, and a fastball up. He steals second base. There's two stolen bases. That is his 16th on the season. And a chance here for Levin to keep the pressure on. Now he sends a fly ball into center, and that will do it. So the Tigers take the lead, one to nothing on the RBI single 
from Ricky. And we go to the top of the fourth. Rusty Coons leading off. Ground ball to Lou. Lou tosses him out. One out for Rod Allen. Allen, a ground ball right at Murray at first. Two outs. And that will bring up Ron Kittle. Kittle batting 234 with seven home runs overall. Among the league leaders, he grounds out to second, and that'll do it. Morris looking pretty good so far. That magic fifth inning coming up, though, that's where we usually struggle uh, with our starters. John Matlack hits Hatcher. That is back-to-back -back games in which a White Sox pitcher has hit a hit uh, Mickey Hatcher. He's starting to take it personally. We're going to let uh, Eddie Murray swing away. 2-2 two -two count. And he pops it up on the infield. And Fiala should make the catch. She does. Okay, now we're definitely going to hit and run. Trammels, 5 for 13 with 2 Ks against Matlack. Ground ball to second. That will get Hatcher over. So runner in scoring position for Glenn Wilson. Wilson batting 304 versus lefties. That's why he's in there instead of Dawson today. He does hit lefties relatively well. In fact, he crushed it into the left field bleachers. A two-run Jimmy Jack. And it's 3 nothing Detroit. Good job by Wilson. That's his fourth home run on the season. He may be only batting 208, but his defense and power is keeping him getting opportunities in the lineup as Lemon grounds out to short. We go to the top of the fifth with Buddy Bell leading off. Again, this is the fifth inning. We typically struggle here as Bell... Grounds out to second. One down. Fran Mullins. Batting 217 with four home runs. Somehow as a shortstop. He's batting sixth. I don't... Feels like he should be at the lower part of the uh, lineup and have Pokoroba moved up with those 27 dongs from last year. Two quick outs for Henry, Henry Cruz who grounds out to second. And another one, two, three. And the White Sox have one hit today. As we go to the bottom of the fifth, here is Big Wheel, Lance Parrish. One for ten against Matlack in his career. And it's going to be one for eleven. He pops it up. Back to the top of the lineup with sweet Lou Whitaker. Lou, one-two count, and he gets a ground ball back through the box for a base hit. Lou on first. Fourth hit for the Tigers. I think we just need to let Ricky take a cut. And he goes down the right field line. Will Bill Whitaker score from first? He will not. He holds up at second. And Henderson has his second double on the season. 922 OPS. That is good. We're going to... He goes to arbitration this year, and we're going to end up... Uh, paying him some big bucks. We can't let him go. If he's going to steal uh, like he is right now, uh, we we want him on our team. Here's Gibby. We're going to have him pull it to the right side if he can even make contact at all. Oh, he pops it up. That's exactly the wrong thing to do. The shortstop Mullins makes the play. So second and third with two down. Here's Mickey Hatcher. Hatcher's got 20 RBI so far. And he flips it to right. Is that going to get down? No, it's going to carry out there to uh, the right fielder, Rusty Coops. And that'll do it. Well, wow, so we strand two runners in scoring position. That might come back to haunt us. We go to the top of the sixth. It's Pocaroba, Scott, and Fiala. Pokoroba grounds out to first. Morris right now is totally under control. Striking out Scott for K number four. Two outs. Here's Neil Fiala. And there's the second hit. He's got both of them. He had the leadoff double and uh, now that base hit. 
can't imagine he's going to be running. Rusty Kuntz strikes out on the pitch that he wasn't even close to making contact with. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Here is Eddie Murray leading off. Matlack uh, really not having a bad game. I mean, he's given up five hits and one walk and a hit batter. And he walks Murray to lead off. Okay. Now we're going to hit and run. Stay out of the double play. Oh, you know what? Let's pull up uh, the in-game stats. We haven't done that. There we go. Player of the game so far. Well, Henderson's two for two with an RBI and two stolen bases, but Glenn Wilson has the two-run home run. Um, so I guess we have to see if that holds up. Ground ball to short from Trammell. That'll get Murray over. Here's Glenn Wilson, as we mentioned. He had that two-run home run in the fourth. And a base hit up the middle. Murray, is he going to score on that? I doubt it. Oh, he does score from second. Good hustle by Murray. And now uh, what? Wilson's got three RBI. So I think that might trump the uh, two for two, two stolen bases. Okay, so Wilson on first. Here's Chet Lemon. Lemon one for two today. Flipping it to right. Caught on a line by Rusty Coots. That's going to bring up Parrish, who's just absolutely struggling. Striking out. He's 0 for 3 on the day. We go to the seventh inning. Morris had 66 pitches as Rod Allen steps in. Oh, there's a base hit down the right field line. Is that going to be two? No, Allen holds it first. Good job by Wilson getting it back in quickly. That will bring up Ron Kittle. One swing of the bat can make this a ball game. Nope, Kittle takes strike three looking. Six Ks for Morris. Here's Buddy Bell. And he also takes strike three looking. Got to take the bat off the shoulders. Two down. Here's Fran Mullins. And Mullins just rolls it on down to Lou. So the leadoff single is stranded. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Four nothing Detroit. Here is Sweet Lou. One for three on the day. Leading off. And he dumps it into right center field. Duck snort. Base hit. Do we want to go for two? We do not. So Lou on first. We have a four-run lead. We're going to let Henderson take a cut. Again, he's two for two with a walk, an RBI, and two stolen bases today. And a base hit into center field. Whitaker goes to third. Man, this is a tough call between Henderson and Wilson today. Matt, uh, give me up. He's 0 for 3. He could really use a big hit here. A ground ball to short. That could be two. Nope, instead, it's just a force out. Oh, I take it back. Nope, the only play was the first. So that will score a run. We give Gibby an RBI. It's 5 nothing Detroit. Hatcher. He dumps it into left center field. Henderson scores easily. Do we want to go for two? We do not. That makes it 6 to nothing on the RBI single from Hatcher. And uh, what was looking like a decent performance from Matlack has uh, gone off the rails. He's at 99 pitches, and they're keeping him out there for some reason. They have a pretty good bullpen. Base hit for Trammell to right. Uh, yeah, we'll throw him. Send him to third, and uh, the throw is late. First and third. Two down for Glenn Wilson. Matlack now at the century mark in pitches. And Wilson strikes out swinging. We are going to the eighth inning. Morris is only at 80 pitches. Henry Cruz leading off 3 for 12 in his career with 3 Ks. Skies it out to left center field. Gibby, I'm sorry, Henderson makes the catch. One out. Next up is Biff. Biff drops it down the left field line. 
He is slow as molasses. He's definitely not going to get a double out of that. Fourth hit for the Sulks today. Tony Scott strikes out swinging. Eight Ks for Morris. Two down for Neil Fiala. Back to the top of the lineup. Ground ball to Tram. And that is it. Morris is dominating today. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Chet Lebin leading off. He's one for three. He had that base hit up the middle before. Uh, I guess that was in the sixth inning. Flies out the shallow left. Madlock uh, going for a complete game. Uh, he finishes off this inning. The Tigers will likely win. At least Matlack will get the complete game. And Lou lines out to right. So we're going to the top of the ninth inning. Morris also going for the complete game. This is exactly what the bullpen needed today. He's got Koontz, Allen, and Kittle. So that's two, three, and four coming up. Here's Koontz, 0 for 3 to strikeout today. Sharply hit ball to Murray. And Murray steps on the bag, one down. Here's Rod Allen. Allen's got a hit today. Oh, a ground ball bleeder that gets past Hatcher at third. I thought about putting Solars in defensively, but I'm like, we're up six. I mean, how much damage could be done? But who knows? It could cost Morris the uh, complete game or the shutout with Ron Kittle up there. Kittle takes strike three looking great slider. That's like the third best pitch in uh, Morris's arsenal. Nine Ks for Jack. Can we get to double digits with Buddy Bell? Oh, no! Bell goes to deep center field. Off the wall. Allen holds it third. A great job by Lemon getting it back in, preventing the run from scoring. And uh, that will leave it up to Fran Mullins to uh, keep the uh, hopes alive. Morris over 100 pitches. Here we go. Playing straight away. Fair strikeout. Number 10 for Jack. A complete game shutout. Six hitter. Handshakes, butt slaps, slap mistakes. And that's going to do it for the month of April. We're going to bounce back. We had 21 wins in April. That is unbelievable. That's one of the better months we've had uh, since we've been simming anyway. We don't need to look at the uh, standings. So we're going to do that in a separate video. We will look at the headline news, though. The Brainiac Baseball Daily Beat. Rice bashes two home runs in the Red Sox win over the Blue Jays. Were they playing? No, they're playing in Boston. Um, yep, a double and two home runs, four RBIs. I'm kind of curious how many home runs does Rice have now. He's got five, so he's on pace to do better than he did. Uh, last season. What's the next game? There it is. Morris hurls a six-zip shutout. Uh, yeah. White Sox batter struggled. Uh, well, yeah. Just allowed just no earned runs tonight. Um, yeah, that's a shutout. Uh, Glenn Wilson went two for four to help raise the Tigers batting average to 281. Who is going to be the player of the game? That will be a tough one. We're going to have to take a little bit longer look at it. Okay, there is one new note. Joe Negro retires at the age of 38. He was a free agent and was signed by the Mets, uh, but he did not get into any ball games for the Metropolitans. So there's a nice long career. Uh, he did spend some time with Detroit uh, from 25 to 20, uh, age 25 to age 27. Those were the really lean... Oh, no, this was uh, 70 to 72. So this was when we were uh, fighting with the A's in the uh, playoffs. So that's kind of cool. Anyway, a uh, nice long career for Joe Negro. Congratulations to him. That's it. Let's pull up the box score and get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. Like and or subscribe. We began the month with a shutout. We end it with a shutout. Player of the game. Is it going to be Wilson? Is it going to be Ricky B. Ricky? Three for three, a walk, one run scored, an RBI, and two stolen bases, or two for three with a home run and three RBI. Uh, Ricky did have a double in there, too. Man, that is tough. Do we give it to Jack Morris for a 
six hit 10k performance wow this is one of the toughest ones we've ever had to do i have to give it to morris i think that's what we're going to do uh, i i don't think there's any wrong answer here um but we're going to give it to morris great shutout for morris glenn wilson had a great game and uh ricky but ricky had a great game john matlack goes to zero and five on the season that's a bummer okay we're going to see you later on this afternoon as we do a uh, separate video for the standings and league leaders through April. Until then, everyone, have a great night.